<laughs> All right, <laughs> smoke that pot. Yeah, Hickok 45 with a model 37 Ithaca Deer Slayer. Let's slay some deer. This happens to be the police model. Before we proceed, I've got something else here to deal with. I've got a project down there from a student a few years back. And I have just, I mean, the most annoying student you could imagine. I have just been waiting for the day when I retired that I could do this. <laughs> uh, let's do it again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I could just take out my, my anger, pent up anger on that student through their project. Been great, feels good. I feel a lot better now. Yeah, this is an Isca model 37. And I was just kidding. <laughs> I never had any pent up anger. I loved all my students. Yes, even you who are watching from a dorm room right now when you should be studying, right? Get back at those books. Actually, that was a project from a student this last spring uh, when I taught, about a year ago, actually. I'm just now getting around to destroying her project. She, uh, she wanted me to put it on the range. She was aware of the video and shoot it sometime. So I've been meaning to do that. Madison, I'm sorry. It took me a year to get around to it. Actually, Madison's a very sweet girl and I feel very bad that I waited so long. Sorry, Madison. But anyway, is that okay? You want me to set it on fire now? Let me put some tannerite in it, blow it up. <laughs> no, we thought we'd start with that. Oh, by the way, yeah, let's go over here and let me show you this thing. Quit fooling around and being too silly, but I, I had promised her I would do that sometime in a video. This is a featherweight Ithaca Model 37. These are classics. They've been around since, gosh, I don't know, probably back 1930 sometime, probably 37, you reckon? And, uh, from Ithaca. Ithaca has an interesting history as a company. I don't go into all that. Don't even know it all. I know they've come and gone and changed names and everything. I, this gun, I think, is still in production. Uh, again, <laughs> there have been some uh, some gaps in production, but it, it really is one of the longest, or if not the longest running pump shotgun uh, in terms of you know, production length. Uh, it, I mean, this thing was made for a lot of years. And uh, it is it's used by the military. And one of the most famous places where it was used, imagine why, Los Angeles, California. The LA Police Department used this thing from the, like the 40s up into the 90s. I mean, this was their police shotgun. And you've seen them in the movies over and over again, partly because of that. I know during the uh, Hollywood uh, uh, bank robbery, you know, I had to use one to try to help thwart that situation. But those two guys were too armored up. It had really very little effect on them. But uh, nice shotgun, a lot of history, and uh, kind of unique in some ways. Uh, you know, we, we tend to, uh, maybe I'm guilty of that more than you are, but I tend to think of Remington 870 or Mossberg, you know, the, the standards that so many people have. There are a lot of shotguns out there, and really this has been one of them. This one happens to have a steel receiver, you know, with the people who who have to have a steel receiver that hate Mossbergs because they have the alloy. And, you know, this is a, from a solid block of steel and uh, it, it's, it's unique in some other ways. Can you tell me what that might be? Well, first of all, it's, it's light <laughs> and it kicks. That's why the owner, who's a viewer, lent it to us. Uh, he has this, he, he's the one to put this on it and he is not a six, eight, but he wanted some padding. And so I just left it on there. Let's take it off so you can see the, the get the look of the, of the firearm. So yeah, it does kick. It's light. And, uh, but you know, these are neat, you know, the old wood, uh, the, I think that's called a corn cob for in there. And I, I just like that. When you see that, you know, it's an old gun, but uh, I ask you a question. I haven't heard you answer it. And that was, what do you see that's different and maybe unique? Well, you don't see any side ejection in the area there, do you? On either side. That's because it ejects out the bottom when you shoot. Right out the bottom, right where you load it. It loads so smoothly. Well, I won't put one in, but it's like a Mossberg. And uh, so that's kind of unique. That's good for uh, lefties, isn't it? So if you're, if you're a lefty, if you're wrong-handed, you know, you've got uh, that option. So... You know, you're loading and everything's happening from underneath. There's some disadvantages to it. A little bit like a bullpup. One of the things that bothers me about a bullpup, you're trying to take a glance at the action. <laughs> you can't see it except on a bullpup. It's back here in your face. You're trying to see what's going on. But, uh, you know, some advantages to that. All right. 
Now there's another, before we go to some of the really hot stuff, let me show you another thing about this. Some of you already know, don't you? You, know, you can read my mind. You know what I'm going to show you here. Because uh, these Ithaca 37s uh, are famous for this, especially the uh, earlier models. I think they discontinued that uh, feature or characteristic sometime in the later 70s. Let's go ahead and top it off. Safety's on. Put another one in it. We're pointed down range. We always are with loaded guns, right? Okay. Or at the clouds. Uh, so, actually, you might not be able to tell that I'm doing this, so I guess I better tell you what I'm doing. Because I've shot a pump shotgun a lot. Used to shoot them in competition and those sorts of things. So I can work the trigger and the pump fairly fast on a good day. Uh, but that's not what I'm doing now. I'm going to pull the trigger one time. All right? One time. And I am not going to let off. <laughs> I know you're thinking it's some kind of joke. I'm trying to convince you it's fully automatic, right? Well, take the safety off. Like I said, I'm going to pull the trigger once. <laughs> Forgot what I was going to do and didn't do it very fast. But now what I was doing, you know, slam firing. This is one of those shotguns that, uh, take my ears off so quick, yelling at you. Uh, once you pull the trigger, you hold the if you hold the trigger down, it just keeps firing, okay, when you bring it out. When I get to right there, bam, bam, bam. Okay, we'll do a couple, three real slow, show you. So it has that slam, slam fire uh, capability. It has to be cocked there, get the safety on. Which some people just love. And uh, it, it, I guess it does help you fire the thing a little faster. You don't have to think about the trigger, the coordination of the trigger and everything. Uh, I've shot a lot of pumps, so that's not a big deal to me, but, uh, but it's kind of cool. I noticed one thing, I didn't have my pad on. I'll just put that on there. I feel better. All right, let's try that again. Let's see, did I? No, I didn't put one in, okay. All right, I'll pull the trigger once, at least I intend to. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I've had a shotgun that did this in a long time. I actually owned one of these several years back. Not much I haven't owned, right? And uh, I think I gave it to my dad or I sold it to him really cheap. He liked it and uh, I think I gave it to him for his birthday or Christmas. And he did not have a, uh, like what we would consider a defensive shotgun. But uh, it did not have the full length uh, magazine tube though. It, it was like about to there. So it's got the slam fire capability. Uh, no, I think all the early models did up until late 70, 76 or something like that. So if that appeals to you, look one up. <laughs> this one was made in the early 70s, so obviously still in the slam fire uh, uh, time period. <laughs> that's weird. I mean, that's, uh, that's interesting. I don't know when you'd need a machine gun, a 12 gauge, but uh, you sort of have that capability if you want to. So, uh, like I said, an, an interesting shotgun. It's one reason I was interested in, and I've had some requests for it. But I, uh, when uh, a, a friend of mine, a viewer, uh, said he had one and uh, would lend it to us, I said, yes, take that thing home. Because uh, they're just neat shotguns. There's something about an old Parkerized police shotgun that's, uh, well, this old for one thing, over 40 years old. Pretty neat. Well, the time has come to kill my shoulder, huh? Let's get some double lot buck in this thing. All right, let's let's punish the shooter. Put a few of these in, these high brass. Loads like butter. I mean, and you can tell just, just watching, can't you? And listening to it go in there. There's nothing in the way, of course. Everything happens right there. That's the entrance and the exit. I believe that's seven. Yeah, so it holds seven plus one, 20 inch barrel. They made some in uh, 18 and a half, I think. They were five plus one, and this one is uh, seven plus one. So pretty cool. Okay, this is going. Well, let's go ahead and top it off. Get some uh, added abuse in there. We got a couple of metal things here. Metal is always fun to shoot with a shotgun. I don't know why. I mean, beyond the regular targets, like that thing right there. 
I'm not even sure what it is, but I found it in a friend of mine's uh, junkyard back on his property and uh, snatched it up. <laughs> there you go. That's nice. Let's hit that and say. <laughs> Again, a little more evidence. Uh, we talk about that every now and then when it comes up. That's, uh, that's probably as far in your house as you would ever need to fire a shot. Outside it doesn't look so far. But, uh, you know, you see the spread there. It doesn't cover the entire wall. Let's shoot the, uh, while we're doing that, let's shoot the uh, tombstone. It's a nice spread. Shoot the cowboy. So you got to be that far away to get that kind of spread. Uh, let's shoot Madison's project again. <laughs> you feel better, Madison. Boy, those things have some punch. They really do. <laughs> Fun, though. I am not complaining. Uh, it feels good. Uh, I'm really sick. I like the recoil. You know what? Let's put a few more of those in. I'm actually not kidding. Uh, I mean, some, some people are recoil shy and they don't even realize why. They, you know, somebody punched them in the arm one time and it hurt or something. Recoil really doesn't hurt. Uh, you might want a pad like that on or something. Uh, and have a, something thicker than a t-shirt on, I don't know. But it really doesn't hurt you. It just pushes you around generally. Now there are firearms that actually hurt a little bit, but uh, not, not most. I had a 375 H&H Magnum. I thought if you didn't hold that thing right, it would punch you pretty hard. Okay, double odd buck. Let's see what else we have here. Let's see what it does to a uh, two liter. At that distance. Wow. Interesting, it's like shooting a slug at it. Oh. That thing again. <laughs> oh, a cookie pan. Nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. I wonder if one of these would actually hit the gong. Let's listen for it. If see if we get a pellet on it. Yeah, heard it. I heard it. Let's try that again. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I hear it ringing. Those pellets smacked it over there. Uh, I don't know how hard, but they smacked it. You don't want somebody shooting at you with a shotgun at any distance. I mean, you don't want anybody shooting at you, period, ever, right? But even a shotgun, even birdshot, you don't want anybody throwing that stuff at you, uh, even at distance. Cool. Okay, it's time for slugs. This classic shotgun. Uh, this thing appears in movies. Uh, I was reading that uh, this was the shotgun Tubbs carried uh, occasionally in Miami in the series, Miami Vice. It was sawed off, pistol grip on it. Uh, it's a very, very common police gun. And again, this is the Deer Slayer. It was a very common model. And uh, this is the uh, Deer Slayer uh, you know, police special. It's called the DS Police Special. And I like this one. I like this model with the full length uh, magazine tube. Okay, let's put one in chamber safety on just so we get more punishment <laughs> right. now, I've not shot it much uh, so I don't know as far as the point of impact with slugs and that kind of thing but uh, we'll, we'll take a few nice old gun nice old gun we'll start on something close like that two liter <laughs> that'll do the job Let's go over there and punch the gong with a slugger, see if we can hit it. <laughs> yeah, I can see the hits. Knock the heck out of it. Ah, didn't get one in. <laughs> Let's see if we can take down a goat or sheep. Got 
Shot ahead at first, went under it. Let's just go on over on the right goat since we've uh, got heavy artillery and it, it is the most difficult to knock over. Let's see if we can hit it. There we go. <laughs> Not too difficult with that thing, is it? Oh man, we'll have to shoot a couple more. We've got a couple more targets, but uh, oh, I had another slug in there. Okay. Let's put it on a, a, one of these uh, propane tanks here. Oh, oh wow, just went right through it. Huh, cool. <laughs> nice. Let's, well, we got more bird shot. Yeah, let's try a little bit more of that. This is seven and a half, by the way. Very uh, handy uh, utility round for just about anything around the farm. This is the, uh, the size I use for trimming trees, seven and a half. I've discovered over the years works really well. And uh, those of you who know all the videos know I'm not joking. I've been using this for years, decades, to trim the trees, keep the trees trimmed on the compound here, around trails and the range. These works beautifully. Okay, so, sweet, what else do we want to pop? How about anything we see here? Let's try that thing with bird shot. <laughs> See, it uh, just bends it, didn't go through. That thing's got some thickness to it. Try the cake pan over there. Let's try this two liter. <laughs> Cut it in half. Try the cowboy. <laughs> oh man, too much fun. One thing about uh, doing the, you know, shooting a lot, people who shoot a lot, one thing you just pick up uh, that's kind of second nature is, is uh, the spread, how much a shot shell spreads. You just, you, you just do from shooting a lot. And uh, so I have a real good feel for how much bird shot or double lot buck it's gonna spread. Got a really good feel for how much a slug's gonna spread. They don't spread much. But just from shooting things at different ranges uh, like this, Let's, uh, before we give it up, let's do one more slam fire. Get the, get her fully loaded. All right, let's do a little slam fire in here. I don't know how fat, wow, that barrel's hot. I wonder why. Okay, I'm getting tucked into my shoulder. Well. get used to that it's such an unnatural thing and I find myself letting up off the trigger <laughs> so pretty cool the the feather light uh, deer slayer police special model 37 Ithaca these are they're kind of collectible they're not outrageously expensive I mean find them for a few hundred maybe it's four or five but uh, they are they are out there and there's so many pump shotguns on the market old police guns of, of all sorts of, from all sorts of companies and uh, so there's just a ton of them out there. Uh, but uh, these, are, these are one choice. This is one choice you might not have thought about. And it's a little bit historical, so it's especially uh, interesting uh, to me. And uh, with some interesting features, huh? It's being able to slam fire it, bottom eject, pretty cool. Uh, having been used in the military and uh, the LA Police Department so extensively for decades out there. It's just an interesting old gun. And I appreciate the viewer lending it to me. Sweet. Life is good.